Hi, my name is Tuoms. Hi, my name is Edis. And today, let us show you how to handle per user installation by converting it to per machine. IT administrators almost always want to have applications that installs per machine. The main reason is that per machine applications are easier to manage and control. And in Microsoft certification requirements for Windows desktop apps, it states how applications should be built. There are multiple points, and in point 10, apps, it's written that apps must install to the correct folder by default, but which ones are correct and which ones are not. 10.1 point explains that all apps must install in program files folder by default, and user data must never be stored in this location because of the security permission configured this folder. 10.6 point states that your app must write user data at first run and not during the installation in per machine installation. And these points often has been violated by software vendors, including Microsoft itself. For example, Microsoft Teams. I know, I know. You will say, but the new Microsoft team is MSIX. Oh, really? So they are not having an MSIX package that installs also per user MSI for add-ins to work with Microsoft Office, right? Yeah, they actually installs it. Later, we will have an episode on how to package the new Microsoft Teams and the issues they are having right now. However, now uh, let's understand why do software vendors, including Microsoft itself, decide to ignore these Windows requirements that makes us more secure. The main reasons are vendors have full control over automatic updates, and there is higher chance that installation will not fail because users do not have admin rights. Let's see how to handle one of these applications where you have files installed in per user locations and what to do if you are in a situation like this. Eddie, you can take over. So, okay, today we're going to repackage uh, an application that installs to the user profile. But before we do that, we have to adjust the exclusion list for master repackager because uh, where this application installs, it is excluded by default. So we can take the file system exclusions XML. We need to find this local updated programs folder. We need to remove it. And then we just need to replace the exclusion list inside the installation directory. Exclusions. Let's replace this. So let's launch master repackager. You could also do this with, with the user interface, but it's easier for me to do it with the file. You can do it also here if you want to. So we're going to take the snapshot. We're going to install our per user application, but we're not going to leave it as is. We're going to show you how to uh, take this per user application and turn it on to, into a per system application. Um, and in this case, it's really easily doable because the application stores the settings inside update roaming instead of uh, the installation directory of the app itself. So when we move it to program files, we will not have a need to modify permissions, which would be a security issue. Uh, you should never add uh, write permissions to program files folders. Uh, that is considered a security issue. So we're going to be OK with that. So the snapshot is taken. Let's install the application. So the application is installed. We get a prompt for a firewall exception. We're going to add that as well with the package. So let's create the second snapshot. And as you can see, the application was launched automatically when you install it. We usually we would recommend to not launch the application during the capture process because you will capture unnecessary user configuration inside the package which you, which you will need to clean out. So it's best to check what was uh, actually installed by the installer not and not by launching the application. So let's wait a bit until it finishes capturing. So it's done. Let's check what files have been captured. So 
looks like Edge decided to update uh, during uh, the packaging process, but that's not the problem. We can just exclude it. Uh, we'll not need Edge. So let's check. We have a desktop shortcut. We have some folders under update local and some folders under update roaming. So usually under update roaming, you will have the application settings. As you can see, there are preferences, locks, lock settings, etc. some JSON files. Uh, usually this can be excluded. And then we have a start menu shortcut that is located in the user profile. Then we have an updater. We're not going to need that. And we have the application itself. So we obviously need this. We're going to leave that and some more edge stuff. So that looks fine now. If you want to check, you can uh, select this and it's going to be much easier to see. So we will have only the application itself, the installation directory, the shortcut and the desktop shortcut. So that's fine. Let's move on to registries and let's check what was captured. So uh, this looks related to the application, but this is related to the installer. So itself, not the application. So we do not need this. We can exclude this. We have some classes registries and we can see that the application added some URL protocol handlers. Uh, we're going to leave those. We're going to need them. But as you can see, they're installed under the current user uh, instead of the uh, system local machine hive. So we captured some certificates. Those will not be needed. Windows updates those often, so we can sometimes see them inside the captured packages. So we once again, we see Edge. Uh, we do not need that. Um, we check these and these will be related to Edge as well. As you can see, we have the Edge here. And that is how you can tell if the classes or registries are related to your app or not. You just open them up and see where the exe or DLL uh, points to. So we're not going to need this. And then we have once again some Edge related stuff. So this is Edge. This is Edge. This is Edge. And this is Edge. So let's remove that. Remove that. Show only included. So we have only the registries for the URL protocol handler. So let's click on next. And uh, here we see the general information about your application. Uh, all of this looks fine, so we can build the MSI. Okay, so now it is done. We can close master repacker. Uh, I will make a copy of the MSI. Uh, it's a good practice to have a working copy of the repackaged applications in case you mess something up. So here we go inside the files view and we can see that it was added under the local data programs and the Kerberos folder. We can just take this folder, move it to program files. Uh, we will need to delete the programs folder. It's not going to be needed anymore under local app data. And if we go to registries, here we will see uh, two keys. One is the product name, one is the classes. So this was the U URL handler, but the product name keys, those are generated uh, due to MSI rules. Uh, when you have, when your installer installs folders, files and folders uh, to per user locations, mm -hmm. The component key path must be a registry key that is installed to the HKCU. So when you move your application to the program files folder, this is not going to be needed anymore. So we can just uh, delete this and it will take care of the component key paths uh, correctly and set them to uh, the file instead of the registry. So that will be all done automatically. You do not need to worry about the uh, keep us.
So, and now we need to move this URL protocol handlers from the HKCU to the HKCR. The easier way, easiest way how to do it is just uh, click on the first row, click, uh, hold shift, click on the last row, and then you can press uh, replace cells. And you can just replace the root with zero. Uh, this is useful because if you would try to replace just uh, the number one, you would replace other entries as well. So that's not useful for us. So the replace cells uh, value uh, feature should be used to do this. So we have moved this, but we need to remove the software classes uh, from the key. And we can just do this and replace all in this table. I made a mistake. I think I, yeah. Let's just revert back and do that again. So we need to just remove this part. Let's replace. OK, and if we go back to the registry editor, we can see that it has been, been moved to HKCR. And that's correct. And we have the two shortcuts. We have the program menu shortcut and the desktop shortcut. And we're still missing one more thing. That was the firewall exception. And I want to check to which application was the exception added for. So it's to this one, locks one. So to do that, you just go to the custom actions and to the predefined actions. And here we can add a new predefined action, which is called add firewall exception. And here we can set the name of the exception. We can select the file. So just go to the files, find your application. And select the profiles. Since it's not a domain machine, we're going to use all the profiles. And then we need to add uh, the name to remove it during an installation. And that's it, as easy as that. So let's save our MSI. Let's copy it over. And now we're going to test our MSI with PS exec. Let me just revert my virtual machine. OK, so we have reverted the, the virtual machine. And now we can test our MSI if it works. So to do that, we're going to use PS exec, which is a tool from uh, Microsoft uh, sysinternal, part of the sysinternal suite. It allows you to install applications from or run any executable from the system account which emulates an SCCM or Intune installation because they will be done from the system account. So we're just going to run it with the switches slash SI, which stands for system and interact. And then we will need to use MSI exec and the path to our MSI. So let's use QB, let's install our MSI. So the MSI is running. If we see a zero here, it means that it was so the installation was successful. So let's try launching our application. Uh, as you can see, we do not see any firewall prompts. So if we open up the Windows firewall, you can see that we have added the firewall exception here. And the application is working, so we can check that it still stores its settings under app data. We have uh, everything here that is fine. And the last thing we need to check if the URL handlers still work. And how you can do this is by just going into run and writing the name of the URL handler and then adding two slashes and then something random and that should trigger the URL handler and you can see that uh, it, if it launches the application it works. Uh, this is just a 
simple test to see if you do, did it correctly. Usually for the applications, they will have specific use cases for those URL handlers and you need to uh, test those in the correct way, but this is just to verify that it's working at all. And we had three in there, so let's verify the other two. Let's close it up. So let's use Luxman CMD. This one works as well. And we have a last one, which is called Alex Kerberos. So, and that works as well. And as you can see, it was pretty easy to move this application from a per user installation to a per system location, which uh, is going to be much easier to deploy and manage from uh, SCCM or Intune than uh, having to deal with uh, user profiles uh, like so. This was fun. Okay, um, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you. Bye.